have to pause because she's starting the equipment now. The name of the class is Your Reality or God's Reality, but I couldn't, I'd have to write it into Christ crucified, and we can't write God's reality into Christ crucified. Oh, wait a minute, that is God's reality. Um, above or earthly? So I wrote above, above, and then I put earthly down below. It's, it's really clever if you think about it. Okay, here we go. We're going to be in Colossians 3. Colossians 3. I'm going to start with just a few verses in uh, chapter 3, and then we're going to hop back to chapter 2. All right. As you're turning there, it would be really good if you, while we're reading this stuff, that you, number one, take note of uh, when the writer of Colossians is talking about our life and our reality above or our life and reality in the earth, or shall I say earthly. And... Um, the above life is supposed to circumvent the earthly life, and this will be a constant thing. But there's also a kind of an interesting thing that I saw uh, between chapter 2 and chapter 3, and that is that chapter 2 seems to me that it's giving more of a theological explanation, whereas chapter 3 is given a practical one. It's real practical. Okay. Um, so... There are comparisons. There are comparisons in chapter two with chapter three that it will state something, if you will, I'm using this term, theologically true in Christ or above. But in chapter three, it will also use similar terminology, but it'll break it out into some practical reality. So I think it's really, uh, really interesting to compare these two chapters. <clears throat> so, chapter 3, verse 1. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. And then just a little bit of the next verse. For ye are dead. Okay, but that's, that's a, I mean, to me, that has to be untangled a little bit. Because he said, okay, it starts with, if ye then be risen with Christ, and then ends over here with, because you're dead. Amen? They have to be sorted out a little bit. They have to be um, approached. And in being approached, they need to be, we need to have the Holy Spirit begin to help us to contemplate what our reality in, in the earth and that is an earthly reality compared to God's reality <clears throat> that is set. It is, it is established it is who Christ is and a lot of times when people talk about this the terminology they use is who Christ is um, but they really they don't they say um, you need to know who you are in Christ folks we don't need to know who we are we need to know who we, he is because that's who we are we're one with him it's his life for you are dead. <laughs> Amen? So <clears throat> these are, uh, the, this can be a sort of a theological uh, study. It's not in, in Paul's heart when he wrote this. And it's not in my heart because I'm really seeing that he is very definitely trying to reach the Colossians and he's trying to reach them with, look, it's almost like he's saying, Colossians, I know 
that your whole life you've lived down here in the material realm. I know that you have. And I know that your mind thinks that way. And I know that your senses are, are able to tell you, but your senses are able to tell you what is in this realm, but they cannot tell you what's in that realm. And they cannot tell you what's in him. Okay. And so, um, so he's, he's aware of the battle. So he spends two chapters, two chapters going back and forth. This is, this is the way it is above. This is the way it is in the earthly. This is what the above offers and offers even in terms of the earthly of, of, of removing it, of, of making it a non-issue as, as we know him <clears throat> and as we, and as we uh, embrace God's reality, which is his son, God's reality, which is Christ. And, oh, okay, so I don't mean embrace it theology, theologically, though. I mean to dwell there. You know, Paul said in the uh, book of Acts, in him we live. And we move and we have our being. When I was Bible school, I read that and I went, what? In him we live and move and have our being. And I took the words move to mean motivated. We're motiv in him we live and we're motivated. That's our motivation. And it's where we have our being, our being, you know, our real being. But just the way that it said it made me... <clears throat> You know, a lot of things in the scriptures, the way it's said, makes me want to know what are you really saying? I, I know that some people can really just go there and, <clears throat> and read it and go, okay, you know, that's good. They may never live it, but they know, you know, they, they just, whatever it says. But to me, and that's why I tell you, it's okay to question, especially with me. It is okay. Because I question so much and still do and want to know. I mean, I want to know, and I want to know for sure, and I want to know by the Spirit of God, and I want, I want, I want things that mess with my head or that, that uh, like this. I mean, to me, this is, we read it because we're used to reading it, so we, can, we just read over it. But if you then be risen with Christ, th seek those things which are above, for ye are dead. You know, um, it, I would have put the dead before the, <laughs> the risen, you know. But apparently, there's a reality in being risen with him where dead needs to be established. It needs to be solid, you know. <clears throat> so... Let's uh, go now to chapter 2. And feel free, if, you, if the Lord shows you anything or whatever, feel free to raise your hand. We, we do take comments and railing accusations. <clears throat> Colossians 2. There's a hand, yes. say that for the people on Skype. Yeah, um, Jason Main is talking about there's a place for asking questions if you if you want to know and then you're seeking there's a heart to go after the Lord and and just uh, asking a question in doubt because you know I mean what is it uh, <clears throat> Second Corinthians is it uh, talks about they could not enter in because of unbelief and and um, uh, that, uh, but see, I, I guess I still, I, 
guess I still don't have a full problem with that. Uh, maybe I would say if the Bible says we shouldn't do that or whatever, that's fine. I say it's okay because I did that at times also. And the Lord was gracious to me and said, well, you know, I mean, look at Paul when he was Saul of Tarsus, you know? I mean, he's, he's beyond questioning now. He's killing them, you know? <laughs> you know? <clears throat> so when it comes to me, when it comes to some of our other teachers or pastors or whatever, don't give them a hard time. Just, <laughs> all right. Um, chapter two, and we're gonna start at verse nine. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Okay, so that's above. That'd be a good thing. Which, which, which scripture applies to which of these, above or earthly? You know, because for in him dwelleth, in the ETH meaning continually abides there, all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. All right? Uh, and ye are complete in him. Okay, so, the next chapter is gonna tell us to mortify our deeds of the body. This says, in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him. Okay, so, my question is, is that a contradiction? Is it a contradiction to say um, that uh, we need to mortify the deeds of our body, but I thought we were complete in him? I mean, years ago, anybody ever listened to that old, old sharing I did like when I was probably 30 something at Brother Bogart's house, remember that? Uh, on Colossians. Anybody ever listen to that one, two, couple, couple of you? There's a, because of this, this same thing that always worked in me, there's a title on one of the chapters that I, I put in there. Uh, well, are we complete or not? I think that's the name of it, <laughs> you know? Because I was asking that. Okay, well, this makes me sound like we're, it's complete. We're complete in him. And this one makes me sound like we got a lot of problems and we got to deal with it. Amen? And it's, and, and you know, how are we going to know this stuff if we just say, well, some magical way, magic, it's all done. And you don't have to know. You don't really have to know. You just have to have faith. Well, I believe in faith, but, it, you know, Jesus did some practical things to bring this about. You know, he didn't just say, well, you know, I'm God and it's magic, so don't ask. You wouldn't understand anyway. I mean, you're, you're people, okay? You know, <laughs> he doesn't do that. He doesn't do that. And there's a whole Bible to help us to proceed with this. All right. So ye are, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principalities and powers. Okay. Well, there's an interesting scripture that we never use for doing deliverance <laughs> but we actually do around here because we use it over in the first chapter and where it talks about let's say if I can even go there eh, I can't not on that <clears throat> where it talks about you have been delivered from darkness but translated into the kingdom of the son of his love is the actual proper Greek translation of that and what, what does that mean, okay? You have been delivered from darkness. That's a, that's a past reality. But you've also been delivered, translated into the kingdom of his dear son or the government of the life and nature of the son. Um, so that's, that's a deliverance that we can stand on instead of doing hand-to-hand -hand combat. That's, a, that's the war is over. Kind of get that? You'd get it better if uh, uh, Dennis would appreciate this. When I was, I just got back from Virginia, and 
I was coming down the stairs, and there was no one in the living room with the TV was going, but I was headed to where um, Brother Stanley was to minister to him. And just as I got down the stairs where you could see the TV, it said, um, uh, it was a game show, and it says, and you won, and there's all this noise, and people go to, and you won a trip to Vietnam. And I went, no. <laughs> <laughs> Take it back. Say it ain't so. <clears throat> but the people, you should have heard the TV. They're going, ah! <laughs> I'm thinking our generation's going, I don't ever want to know that place anymore. Uh, <laughs> anyway, sorry for the little sideline <laughs> there. But all right, so, the, so it, it, what we're talking about here is that. Um, you're complete in him who is the head of all principalities and powers. You know, you remember that old saying, you're not the boss of me? Well, the devil can't say that. Jesus is the boss of me. He's the head of all principalities and powers. Okay? <clears throat> all right. In whom also you're circumcised. Okay. So this is important. See, we just read that and we go pretty quick with it. In him dwelleth all the fullness of God. Head, you are complete in him, which is the head of all, in whom also you are circumcised, cut off, flesh, removed, a death. See, that's, that's every bit as good news as complete in him. You, you know why you're complete in him? Because you've been circumcised. The flesh has been cut off with the circumcision made without hands in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Okay, so he's viewing this as um, the fulfillment of Old Testament circumcision, which was given to Abraham. And as such, he was the father of the Jews and therefore passed down to all Jews, and it's still honored to this day. But this is the fulfillment. This is the true circumcision. Amen. Actual flesh nature has been cut off at the cross. He calls it circumcised, but cut off at the cross, taken care of, removed. Um, and he calls it the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of, with, of Christ. So it didn't say that Christ did the circumcision. Circumcision of Christ because we are his body. Amen. Buried with him. All right, so here we go. We were doing so well. We were in him all the fullness. We were complete. Now we're taking a step back, circumcised. Now we're buried. It doesn't feel very above at this stage, I'm saying. It doesn't feel, the scriptures feel like we're backsliding here a little bit, you know, and we're not. Because all of this is what brought this about. And if it's just words, and if we just say, oh, okay, somehow, this relates to the Old Testament circumcision instead of seeing the Old Testament was a shadow of things. You cannot get the full picture from a shadow. I mean, if there's a bright light right there, and I, I mean, I can see a little bit of my shadow right here. I don't know if you can because it's direct, but anyway, it's there. Um, but you can't, you know, you wouldn't really be able to tell if I've got a ring on. You wouldn't be able to tell you know, what the basic makeup of my hand looks like or whatever. You couldn't draw a picture of it. You could just do an outline, a silhouette. Well, this is the real picture. And this is where we dig in. This is where we say, okay, this is something that you, that you allowed Paul to tout this death that we have with him, but you're doing it now in terms of circumcision and you know some of you know some of us can say well i'm i'm a gentile so i don't understand that or whatever you don't you don't have to be a jew to understand new testament circumcision 
as we'll see when we, when we move a little more into this. Um, buried with him by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism. All right, so we see the death in circumcision. We see the burial uh, in, not in the physical water baptism, but the baptism that Romans 6 talks about. You are buried by baptism into his death. All right. So if there's going to be a death, if there's going to be a death, then the flesh needs to be put out of sight. Okay. You, you, could, you could leave your, your old grandmama that passed away in her rocking chair in the living room. All, your, all the rest of your life, you know, and, you know, think that this, you know, well, I'm, I'm honoring grandma. Yeah, well, first of all, grandma stinketh. <laughs> and the flesh stinketh. That's the point. See, your spirit doesn't stink, but the flesh stinketh. So <clears throat> um, there has to be a barrier. A real burial. Okay, so we're thinking in terms of, okay, dirt and this and that. Burial is putting the, the flesh where it belongs in the earth, but putting it under the earth, you know, and putting it out of sight. It's out of sight. The, the real life is no longer there. For you're dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. When he who is your life shall appear, then shall you appear with him in glory. That's the next part of the verse in chapter 3. <clears throat> so, what does that mean? All right. You, again, we can dig around. Uh, we, can, we, can, we can go on Google and find all of the great teachings on burial. But when it comes right down to it, it means that this work of Christ needs to have put our flesh away, out of sight, out of smell, <laughs> so that Christ can be seen. Okay? So that would be the goal to attain unto burial. We can say, I'm dead with Christ, and walk around and sting. We can, and we will, and we do. Go, so, so the question arises, does Christ in him dwell all the fullness, does that, uh, or we're complete in him, does that have any practical value at all? I mean, you know, because we, you know, we, can, we can hold these truths to be self-evident. But the old man is dead. Four score and... 20 billion years ago, God set forth this planet, you know, or whatever. <laughs> or we can go here into the Word and say, Holy Spirit, breathe. Breathe not just some breath of life that still was a shadow, but the very breath of Christ's life. Make it so real that I... I believe the cross right down to I will not settle for signs of flesh showing up all the time. Why? Why? To do that would, would violate the son, would violate his death, would dishonor his death, would violate what the father said his son has, hath accomplished. It would be, you understand what I'm saying? Well, we've all done those violations. We have. We've all done it because there's a process of getting through that. I think for me, the thing that made a difference was that I realized pretty early that for me to live is not Christ. <laughs> for me to live is death. Paul said, for to me to live is Christ. He didn't say for me to live. For me to live is death, for to me, to live according to this word and God's heart and the work that Jesus did on the cross, it's Christ. And, you know, I walk around with a, a mallet and a 
and a stake to drive into that flesh, into the heart of the flesh. Wait a minute, does that sound like Dracula? That's how you get rid of it. Anyway. <clears throat> Wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God. So, so your faith isn't first and foremost. Your faith is not first and foremost um, in the fact that you don't see anything wrong with you or still seemingly alive. Your faith isn't there. Your faith starts to be in the operation of God. I believe the word of God. I, you know, this, this is what I believe. I believe, you know, what I used to say, I believe the Bible from Genesis to the maps. Well, I kind of believe the maps. Maybe they're not exactly correct. But the, the, there has to be a standing on the word of God. There has to be a, wait a minute, carnal mind, shut up. Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> right? Yeah. And there has to be a desire that this become more real than my reality. Yeah. Yes. More real than my reality. Can we get discouraged after a certain amount of time by seeing a lot of flesh that we don't want to see? Yeah, we can, for sure. You know, pastors can too. But anyway, that's another story. That's not what we're on right now. But yeah, no, it, it happens. But I tell you what, when a person, a person, whoever that person is, decides, you know what? I want the Lord at whatever cost. I want you to, Holy Spirit, take your best shot. Well, when he does, you're going to be nailed to that, that cross. There'll be a death, but there'll be a life too. There'll be a resurrection, but he is the resurrection and the life of this is that worth it yes. you know well you know you you wrestle between these two realities well I don't know my reality is pretty real or I like my reality or I you know feel comfortable with well I I'm gonna tell you it's true the cross probably wasn't real comfortable didn't see any pillars <laughs> you know, <laughs> didn't see any sleep number crosses. <laughs> Just wasn't there. <laughs> so there's a transition. But you know what? Anything, anything. I mean, like, like if you're going for an education, it's hard work. If you're going, you know, you're going to get your master's or you're going to get a doctorate or what, it's hard work and you have to put in the time and you have to put in the energy and you have to put in the books and you have to put in all of this. Isn't it okay to do the same for Christ? You just sort of exchange the books and you sort of exchange where you're putting your time in and you just, you know. But the focus comes down and it begins to be on his reality. And with time, all of that old, it's like Paul when, you know, he met Jesus, the scales, you know, he became blind. He didn't, he didn't, they didn't fall off when he saw Jesus. He became blind when he called, saw him. Blind to what? Everything but the Jesus he just saw. Got knocked down off his donkey. Blind, and now I, I can't see except this emblazoned person in my being, you know? Where's the, where's the earth? Where's my donkey? <laughs> you know, it's all of that. It's all of that. And... The Lord spoke to him and said, hey, I'm going to bring a brother along, and he's going to lead you, take you here, and, and then you're going to be prayed for, and the scales will fall off your eyes. Well, I mean, just read the book. The scales fell off of Paul's eyes. He, he only seemed to see Jesus. 
It was Jesus that he was seeing. It was, it was the life. It was the way, the nature, the, the beauty of the cross as opposed to, because, you know, and I always paint this picture, but, I mean, I always see the cross, Jesus on it. Jesus doing what? bleeding and it's yucky and it's all that stuff and John is there and Mary the mother of Jesus is there and there's Mary and Mary and there was a bunch of Marys there anyway and they're going they're going oh ah. you know how Jews do <laughs> I can say that and uh, and uh, this is the worst day ever. And God's going, this is the best day ever. You should be rejoicing. If you knew what was going on here, you'd go, this is the height, the fullness of time. This is when God has sent his son just to bring about a oneness back with me and to live by this another life instead of all this. You know, I mean, if you think about it, if you think about it, living in this world and really understanding what it is and how that reality is so different from Christ being our reality, it is like living in the bottom of the ark. It's not, I mean, if you understand that your reality is the bottom of the ark. Can I get amen? I mean, it really is. Why? Because there's all this rebellion, because there's all of this uh, wrong thing. The flesh is first, and and you know they, they they look at Jesus and say this what this guy needs is to die. That's how they see, you know. And then it'll be we'll have rest. All the things that Jesus came to bring, they're saying we'll have it if we kill him. If we kill him, then. The Jewish leaders are saying, we'll have rest, you know, and it'll be more peaceful. Jesus stirred up problems. Jesus is the problem. He's the problem. But he's not the problem. He's the answer. But you can't see that if you're in this reality looking at the cross. If you're for him, you're weeping, and if you're against him, you're rejoicing. But you're rejoicing that he's dead. But the father knows. And somehow that sneaky little thief <laughs> said, this guy doesn't deserve this, man. We deserve this. You know? And Jesus says, whoa. Dude, this day with me, you know, when, I, when we pass on, when we get to the other side, this is going to be what I'm going to say to everybody about you. He's with me. He's in me. He's with me. Jeez. Okay, so. <clears throat> Who hath raised him from the dead. Okay, so buried with baptism, wherein also you're risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who God raised him from the dead. God didn't raise you from the dead. God raised him and you were in him. Remember, in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead body. In him you are complete. God raised him. You don't go, oh, well, I'm so special, he's going to raise me because I've been a Christian all my life and I've been, you know, I mean, I, I've never really counted up how much tithe I've given over the years, but I know God has. And maybe he hasn't, you know. Um, you remember what happened when David started counting stuff. But that's another story. <clears throat> um, verse 13, and you, being dead. <laughs> See, so get this now. This is, he's talking about this reality, God's reality, as opposed to this. So he's going, you know, uh, there's a circumcision with Christ, there's a burial, you're risen with him, you're in him, you're complete in him, in him, all that you ever need dwelleth in the fullness of him. And, and then so, but it's all talking about Christ. It's all talking about God's reality. And then it's like, he turns and says, now you, you, we need to talk about you. Okay. 
Yeah, what about me? You're, you're dead. You're dead. It's the best thing I could ever do for you. I don't get it. Of course you don't. Of course you don't. You have to seek the Lord and say, reveal your son in me. Reveal your reality and he'll do it. Okay, so he says, and you, being dead in your sins. Okay, so everything we're going to talk about now is not the above. He's going to start talking about, not everything, but for a little bit here. He's going to start talking about this earthly or this your reality. <clears throat> and you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh. Okay, so there it is. He's saying, if it's going to be you, that's you before me. You're not circumcised. You're not Jewish. You understand what I'm saying. You're not of the family. You're not, you know, you're, you don't even know that you're already dead, but it's the wrong kind of dead. You're dead in your sins. Which one do you want? <laughs> you know, do you want your reality where you are dead in your sins, or do you want his reality where you're dead in the son that is now your life? Raise your hands. <laughs> That's right. We'll, Lord, I'll take door number two. Yes. <clears throat> okay, so, um, but then he says, hath he quickened together with him? He didn't just quicken you. You got no hope. You've got nothing to offer God because if for no other reason, then all he wants is his son. If you don't have the son, if you're not offering him up the son, the lamb, that's what Israel did. That's what the priest did constantly, offered up the lamb. And God would get the sm smell the sweet savor and he would forgive them of their sins because this lamb gave himself. Because this lamb was different than they were. They would come back with another lamb and say, let's kill another one so I don't go to hell. I'm talking about Christianity now, but that's another story. <clears throat> Quicken together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. <clears throat> okay. And having spoiled principalities, okay, there's the that you have the principalities. That's the below, that's the earthly, and powers. He spoiled them. The, the, his reality dealt with your reality. He's not trying to intervene in your reality all the time. That's what much of Christianity thinks he's trying to do. If he can just intervene in my reality and fix this, this one thing that really bothers me, this cap won't go on right something you know and then oh god this is so important to me and he's going i am not coming i'm not sending my son down there again he's done it you believe it okay that's what he, that's that's the way he rose the stone away and you're in him <laughs> all right so uh 16 let no man therefore judge you in earthly stuff this is you're above yes. you get it you're in him you are one that's where your reality is so don't let people judge you in the earthly which involves what what you eat and drink in respect of a holy day down here the new moon how you how you um, celebrate that or the sabbath days which are a shadow of things to come and when it says things to come he's talking about you need the revelation of this. You need, it's here, but you need to see it, or he wouldn't be talking about it like this. <clears throat> but the body is Christ. Okay, what does that mean? You're the body, but the body is Christ's body. Yes. This is a, an above reality that lives in his body. If this is, if, if only my only understanding of me is this is my body and God made me so that I could be a, a free moral agent and be independent and independently love and seek him 
he would not have said like in Ephesians over and over, well, you are, you are, uh, you are dead with him, you are buried with him, you are raised with him, and not just you, but we all were. And, and who hath raised us up and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's past tense. That's already done. He hath done that. There's a resurrection that's already happened. But that resurrection for us has happened in him, but the resurrection to us is him because it was him that was raised. He is our resurrection. Can you kind of see that? I mean, who hath raised us up and made us sit together in heavenly places. This is God's reality. Okay, well, we say, well, you know, I don't really feel very raised. Um, I, don't, I don't read anything about feelings here except for walk not by sight, but by faith or whatever. It, it's, the whole thing is not about feeling anything. It's about if this is the eternal word of God and this is what God says, that's it. That's it. That settles it. That's okay. In my mind, it doesn't argue anymore. <laughs> I done whooped it into <laughs> submission. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, but it used to question all kinds of stuff. Well, wait a minute. That was me. <laughs> um, some of you know this, but I... Several times back when I was in Bible school, we also had a big church, and it was a big old building with a lot of people. And my understanding of Scripture, some of them that they would say, was different than what they were preaching. And I'd stand up and rebuke the pastor right in front of everybody. And I was like 22 or 21 years old. What the heck was I thinking? Do you understand? I mean... That, Really, I look back and I go, are you just insane? But, but I was trying to stand up for the word of God. And so one of the ones I remember clearly <clears throat> was, that says, uh, they said, you are not righteous. Your righteousness is this filthy rags. Uh, Jesus is now your righteousness. He's your only righteousness. And I stood up and rebuked him and read uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 uh, or, or 21. Uh, he who knew no sin was made to be sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God. And I stopped right there. And instead of anybody coming up and trying to, when, when I left the service, you know, I felt pretty good because I straightened them out and they looked at the word. And this brother comes up and he's walking with me and he says, hey, that's really good. Um, you know, those scriptures, you know, da 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 He said, did you ever notice the last two words? And I said, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. And he said, well, here, look. He had his Bible open when he approached. He says, he goes, da 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 and he reads it to me, the righteousness of God in him. And I knew, I mean, this, it, wasn't, it wasn't just quoting something. The Spirit of God hit me. And I went to my dorm room, and I just, I, I stared at it and stared at it. And then I started reading the surrounding scriptures, like all of this. There's so many in hymns and everything, you know, that it's just like, oh, my God, oh, my God. You know, but the, here's the bad thing. I didn't do that once. I did it, I think, three different times. It was great for me. It was great because I got, I was so deeply confronted with my pride and with my lack of, of but thinking I know and everything. It just struck me to my core. And, just, and I just go, I would bend over like this and just go, oh God, oh. You gotta reveal your son in me, I'm a mess. There's only one other person in my life since then that I know that has stood up and rebuked somebody. And I won't tell you who, but it, they weren't part of this church. <clears throat> and I was the one who got rebuked. <laughs>
for my preaching. Well, you reap what you sow. You know what I mean? And he, and he, did, it, and he did it twice, so I'm waiting for the third one. <laughs> you reap what you sow. <laughs> well, my, you know, my point is, too, is that if I can't be merciful, if I can't do it, then shame, deeply shame on me. But I have so much compassion for people, you know, because I know, I know. I mean, I know what was going on in me, and I wanted to know, but I, but I also, I don't know. There was, I still hadn't seen I was dead, you know, for you're dead. That, that kind of settles it all. You go, you know, uh, Randy, do you, you know, uh, well, never mind, I won't go there, especially since our time's running out here, and I was going to go to chapter three also. <clears throat> so he's talking about which are a shadow of things to come but the body of Christ. That So he's saying eating this stuff, not eating this stuff, doing this and that, all that may sound really religious and God really honors it, but he doesn't. It's all in Christ now and God honors his son. It's not the earthly. It's not your reality is what he's saying to us. <clears throat> And then verse 18, let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility. So that was part of it is this, oh, I am voluntarily being humble uh, for, you know, trying to be something in the earth. And he's saying all that is done away. That is, that is not what it's about. It's, if it's not Christ's humility, in other words, if it's not his nature or if it's not him bringing that forth, then it's just us trying to be a Jew. And that's why I always look at it. I don't know. I'm not trying to offend other Jews, but I'm just saying. It's just trying to, trying to keep the law and do the right thing, you know, and then think that we've gained some sort of righteousness, you know. I mean, I, those scriptures to me, that your righteousness is as filthy rags. He didn't say your sin is as filthy rags. You know what I mean? Because we kind of go, we kind of read it that way, and we go, "Yeah, amen." You know, but he's going, "No, you're, you know, uh, what does it say in Psalms that David said, man at his best is altogether vanity.'" And I'm going, "Is mine, Lord, is my, my best?" And he's going, "Yeah," you know, and at the end of uh, judges, you know, and and the beginning. You look at that mess going on in judges. They're up, they're down. Then they, you know, once God comes and delivers them, they they go back down. And then He comes and delivers them. And da da da. Deliverance isn't the answer. We need another life. And what? How does that book? What does it quote several times? What? Every man did that which is right in his own eyes. Well, you know, trust me, a lot of people have different ideas of what's right, which can violate other people. And if one does it, another one will do the same thing. See, it's got to be one, you know, one, one, one law, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. One nature. One body, one father, one. I don't know where I get this stuff from. Oh, yeah, that's Ephesians 2. Yeah. <clears throat> um, worshiping of angels, intruding to those things which he had not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. Well, slap my face. <laughs> Amen. Did you, did you read that? <laughs> did you hear it? You know? which he had not seen vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. I could just write Randy over that, you know? <clears throat> and not holding the head. There's the real sin. There's the, because it's, it is voiding out the above or God's reality, and it's still trying to have something in the earth, earthy that will gain God's approval when all it's doing is hacking off God because we're, we're ignoring everything Jesus did on the cross and gave us freely. <clears throat> uh, 
and not holding the head from which all the body, the head from which all the body, do you see it? By joints and bands have nourishment ministered and knit together. So the whole point is that we be knit together in the head, in the one, in that one. This is, this is where we draw from him, his life, his seat. This is it, but not holding the head uh, by which, so we're avoiding the, the increase, as it goes on to say here, um, knit together increases with the increase of God. So we're, we're voiding out the increase of God because we're holding to, you know, our fleshly puffed up minds that really don't understand yet. And, and you know, by the way, Paul didn't just write this yesterday for this church, just so you know. This was written about 2,000 years ago with some people that were just like us, <laughs> needing the Lord, needing the Lord. Increasing with the increase of God. This is not increasing with great wisdom. This isn't increasing with uh, great spirituality on our part. It's an increase of God himself in us, Christ in us. Wherefore, if you be dead, see, he keeps coming back to that. Wherefore, if you be dead with Christ, see, remember that other one up here where it says, and you, and you, you know, and you being dead, he keeps coming back to us and saying, okay, don't forget, you're dead, quit popping up out of the, the tomb, you know, inside of the tomb with a hammer and chisel working on that that stone, trying to come alive instead of having God bring you out. See, this, when the people came, when Mary and them came to the tomb, the stone was rolled away. God didn't need to roll the stone away to get his son out of there. You know, like God the Father opens it. Come on, you know. Didn't need to do that. That was for us. That was for us to see why seek ye the living among the dead? Why do you keep seeking something of life among the dead? Why do you keep seeking the living in your reality when the living is Christ, God's reality? The living is his son, God's reality. The living is far above all principalities and powers and mights and dominions that can be named, whether in heaven or in earth and that which is to come. A reality that is so far beyond us, and yet, he says, but God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. I mean, I should, I should probably stop. Maybe I'll just finish reading these verses. <clears throat> Uh, wherefore, if you be dead, why? Do you see it there? Wherefore, if you be dead, why? <laughs> That's a good question there, isn't it? If you're dead, why are these things going on? Why, you know, as though living in the world? Why as if living in your reality? Why as if living in the earthly So do you see at least, I mean, it, it continues in the next chapter. But do you see that he's saying now, why as though living? Why as though living in the world? Why as though living in the earthly? Because the next verse is going to go, you know, if, you, if you're risen with Christ and seek those things which are above. In other words, you're still down there. And everything that he's done is speak of the above reality and then go back down and contrast it to the earth. That's what we've seen right here. And then back up here and then back down here and then back up here and down here. And it's almost like he's talking to us like in Judges. We should get this. We should seek this. We should say, yes, Lord. We should, you know, but, you know, as if you're subject to ordinances. You should be subject to the life and nature and the mind of Christ because you're dead and because you are risen, but only risen in him. See? That's, that's God's reality. That's not going to change with him. 
See, we, we, we can't go, well, you know, if I keep on this path, maybe God will go, you know, you got something there. That's pretty good, you know. He's not going to do that. He's, he's not going to fall for it and go, oh, really? You know, he's not. He's, you know, this is hard stuff with him. This is his son. And he gave his beloved son for us not just to be saved from hell, but that we could have that life, that very nature, that very being, that very, those thoughts, that mind, that mind in us. Let this mind be in you, you know? And what does it say from there? Who thought it not a thing to be grasped after, to be equal with God. You know, I, I don't, I don't want to go down to the earth. I, I want to be equal with you. That's the order. That's what it's talking about. Who thought it not a thing to be grasped after. That's the original Greek there. To be equal with God. But came in the flesh who became a man. That's a drop down for the Son of God, wouldn't you say? And then, as a man, he was like a servant. I came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give my life a ransom. You know? What did Peter say to him when, when Jesus, for the, one of the first times, really mentions, you know, hey, I got to go to the cross. This is Matthew 16. I got to go to the cross and die and be mistreated of men and, and abused and all this kind of stuff. Not so, Lord, no, this, this, you know, this shouldn't be. No, don't do it. This is not the right way. <laughs> don't do it. And Jesus says, get behind me, Satan, for thou savorest the things that be of man and not the things of God. You're savoring the earth here. You're savoring your reality. You're thinking, this is, no, you know, Jesus if I die not, you're yet in your sins, basically, it says in 2 Corinthians 15. If you die not. So, yeah, yes, thank you. Thank you for a nature that would even think to do that. Thank you for a higher being that would not just, because people talk about, well, he came and he was like, like us. He's nothing like us. I mean, he's got a body and stuff, but he's nothing like us. And he proved that by being God and walking around in that body. And then he proved it by continually going lower until he became obedient unto death. So he didn't say he was, you know, I hear people always talking about, well, he was obedient to the Father. He was obedient unto death, you know. I mean, he said this is, you know, um, uh, when he was in the garden, he said now is my soul this is jesus the son of god who now has a soul now is my soul troubled and what shall i say then father save me from this hour but for this cause came i unto i'm here to die i'm here i'm here okay he's in you he's here amen Yes, Jesus is here. He's in us. Well, he's here to lay down his life used through this body. See, he gave up that body, but now he's, now we're his body, where he dwells, where his habitation, where his home, where he can feel at home, where he can live the way he wants to, instead of being directed by us. For ye are dead. Glory to God. I mean, this is. Folks, this is good news, okay? <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll stop there. And I've gone over a little bit, too, and Kelly's got a class coming up, so Father, forgive me for I have sinned. And please enjoy the little ducky I have for you up here.